Good morning. I want to welcome you all to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Karen Toos, Pastor of Prince of Peace. For those of you who are watching online, I want to welcome you as well. And a couple of announcements before we begin our service. Um, it, it's summer. We need people to mow the lawn. So if you can help out with that, um, I feel like I make this announcement every week. And, and every week somebody calls in, so I guess it's a good announcement to be making. So, But I'll just keep making it as long as, uh, as, long as the grass keeps growing, I'll keep saying we need people who mow the lawn. Uh, next Sunday, I will be away. I'm le actually leaving on Tuesday to take Grace to Washington, D.C. for her year with Lutheran Volunteer Corps. And so um, Pastor Doug Myers, a retired pastor in Galena, will be here leading our worship and preaching next Sunday. Um, and while I'm gone, in case of any pastoral emergencies, uh, Pastor Miho from Good Shepherd in Lena will be on call for me. So just uh, call the church office and Stephanie will reach out to Pastor me hope. Um, reminder about the lunch at Crate Park at noon on Wednesday and also out to lunch which is tomorrow. The details of that are in the bulletin today. And we have uh, sign up sheets on the bulletin board out in the narthex for choir. Encourage those of you who would be willing to sing in the choir this coming year to sign up so that we know if we'll have enough people to get that going again in September. And also there's a sign up sheet there for the trip to the I'm not sure how to pronounce the African American Museum in Chicago. I was pronouncing it Dusable, but maybe I'm mispronouncing that. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. There's more information about that in the newsletter that came out on Wednesday, but there is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board for that as well. Are there any other announcements that should be made at this time? All right, seeing no hands, then I would draw your attention to those that are in the bulletin. And let us rise and begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of our God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that, strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, then he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the Mount of God. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading responsibly from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the gentle, the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let, let, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. A reading from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for, for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down, comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. And it's time for the children's time. I have a brother who's a chef, and he wears a special chef's coat and a special chef's hat when he's at work. It's required, but anybody who happened to see him in the building would know that he's the chef if they didn't happen to already know him. And there are other kinds of people, other people who we know by the way they dress. Give me some examples. <laughs> Enid, what did you say? A doctor in the hospital. Absolutely, we would know them by the way they dress. Other examples? Police. Firefighters. Yeah, there are quite a number of people that we would be able to identify by the way they dress. But 
Oh, and then I was going to go on to say, and so, so like children might want to imitate those people by dressing like them. Maybe imitate a police officer by having a police costume or, or something like that. But in today's second lesson, St. Paul tells us that we are to be imitators of Christ. Well, there's no special outfit that, or anything like that that we can wear to imitate Christ. So we have to think beyond what the appearance is, the outward appearance, and we have to think to what Jesus did, to his commitment, to his love, to his blessing. So when we think of imitating Christ, it's not about what we look like on the outside. It's about what we do and the content of our heart. Let us pray. God, thank you for giving us Jesus to imitate. Help us to be faithful in following his examples of love and compassion, kindness, grace, and mercy. In his name we pray. Amen. And thanks, everybody. And now let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In these summer months, we may start thinking about vacations. Maybe a vacation that we have already taken this summer, or maybe one that's coming up yet this month, or maybe in the fall. Grace and I are taking a vacation on our way to Washington, D.C. this coming week. We're visiting three national parks along the way. I'm looking forward to some hiking and um, walking around in the forests and the wilderness of Shawnee National Forest and Daniel Boone National Forest and Shenandoah National Park. But you know, it was not a vacation that Elijah was taking when he headed out into the wilderness. He knew that the wilderness was a meeting place with God, and he and God needed a meeting. Now, two weeks in a row, we have Old Testament lessons that take us into the wilderness. Last week's Old Testament lesson told of the Hebrew people's hunger in the wilderness as they journeyed from Egypt to the Promised Land. The story focused on their hunger and the complaining and the hopelessness they felt and their mistrust of God that resulted from the people's hunger. This week, our Old Testament lesson has a different focus. Elijah's fear and his mistrust of God and his hopelessness that resulted from his fear. Now, I'm not sure if Elijah was mad at God for letting Queen Jezebel be in such a position of power that she could call for Elijah's death and know with absolute certainty that he would be killed. Or if Elijah was just wanting to make sure that he wouldn't die at Queen Jezebel's hand. So he wanted God to take his life. And, you know, maybe it's some of both. But either way, Elijah wanted to call the shots. He wanted to tell God what to do. So he went to the wilderness to tell God what to do. He wanted to make sure that he was in charge. And so he went and he said to God, I'm done. Take my life. Now, Telling God what to do in the midst of daily life, out there on the plain, so to speak, is one thing. That worked when Elijah and the prophets of Baal had their contest, and Elijah called upon God to come down and to light a fire on the sacrifice of a bull that Elijah had prepared. But to tell God what to do in the wilderness... Well, that's a different thing entirely. The wilderness is the place where human life is fragile and so much more clearly dependent upon God. The wilderness is the place where people go to encounter God. 
In the wilderness, people hear God and receive God's guidance and blessings. We will remember other stories of the wilderness. The wilderness was where God met Hagar in her need and provided water for her and her son Ishmael when they were about to die of thirst. And the wilderness was where Moses found new life when he met and joined the family of Jethro. And then also where he heard God's call coming to him from the burning bush. And the wilderness was where the Hebrew people found new life when they'd been freed from slavery in Egypt. The wilderness was the place where they came to know God, where they received God's law, and where they came to know who they were as God's chosen people. And also in the wilderness, that was where Jesus went, driven by the Holy Spirit after his baptism in the Jordan River. It was where his mission was tested as he confronted the devil's temptations. So in that tradition of going to the wilderness to encounter God, the wilderness is where Elijah went in his fear, in his hopelessness, in his despair, when Queen Jezebel declared that within a day, Elijah would be dead. But that wasn't the end of it. With God, earthly power is never the end, is it? The angel came and spoke to Elijah and told him to eat, and to drink from the cake and the water that were provided for him. So Elijah ate, and he drank, and then he slept. And when he woke up, the angel told him to eat again and drink some more, or else the journey would be too great for him. In the midst of a circumstance that was completely hopeless, according to Elijah's perspective, with Jezebel's death threat hanging over his head, God provided hope and all that Elijah needed to keep going forward in God's mission. And God demonstrated once again that no situation, no threat of any earthly power is beyond God's care, God's protection, and God's blessing. And many of us have had times in our lives when we have felt that no matter what we have done, it's not been enough. We've had times when we've felt overwhelmed. We've felt times when our efforts have not been met with the success we'd hoped for. We feel that more needs to be done. We felt that there are too many demands on our time and our resources. And so we get exhausted, and our energy is depleted. And maybe, like Elijah, we think about walking away or giving up. And then here in today's Old Testament lesson, we hear that walking away is not the end with our God. Walking away into communion with God is renewing, and it is restoring, and it is life-giving because of God's gifts. And we don't have to go to a literal, physical wilderness, but any place, any time, that we step away and open ourselves up to God's care and God's blessing, that is a wilderness time. A time for God's renewing power to be at work in us. Because the wilderness is the opposite of the world. The world is a place of competing powers, focused on our human desires, our human agendas. But when we set that aside for a time to open ourselves for God's encounter, we find that God's power, God's 
power of love and blessing is healing and empowering and life-giving. And as we step into a time apart or a wilderness time with our God, God takes that opportunity to provide for us and care for us and strengthen us so that we can continue on in our faith and in our journey of life. Elijah went into the wilderness with the intention of dying. But instead of death, he found blessing in God's care. May our lives be filled with such opportunities for healing and wholeness as we turn to God in the midst of the challenges and the situations and the frustrations of our lives. Amen. We rise and sing our hymn, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness.
are made God's people through the sacrament of holy baptism. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms. We lift up mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith, exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel. We pray for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about their future. For all who mourn the death of, loved one, of a loved one, for all who are sick, we pray for those on our prayer list, John, Kinsley, Rob, Jim, Karen, Bruce, Marie, Joey, Ernie, BJ, Elizabeth, Deb, Twyla, Dawn, Todd, Tim, Barb, Becky, and Karen, and for those whom we name now. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we give you thanks, gracious God, for the blessings we receive each day. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that we name now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who prepare the table and elements for our communion celebration, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for rain to fall upon the earth in areas of drought, to provide for crops to grow, and your land to yield the life that you intended. We ask you to reduce the power of storms, so that devastation does not happen. And we pray for the forest fires out west, especially the Dixie Fire, asking you to protect the land, the wildlife, the people. Be with firefighters and all who are engaged in fighting the fire. Bring your grace and mercy. God, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now I invite you to share the peace of God with those around you. Peace be with you. As we worship, we offer ourselves. I want to thank all of you as you make your offerings to support the ministry of Prince of Peace, our Synod, and the ELCA. Through your offerings, we continue to serve God and God's people. We sing our offertory canticle, What Feast of Love. bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the sake of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set his table with more than enough for all. Come, be fed. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to take your host. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now I invite you to take your wine or your grape juice. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you, now and forever. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Please note that the refrain is sung twice, then the first verse is sung twice, the refrain is sung twice, the second verse is sung twice, and we conclude with singing the refrain twice.
by God's word and meal, go to share the peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.